I know my cowboy friend years ago, I, I preached about him. He went home to be with the Lord a few years ago, uh, coming up in March. And, um, you know, when he went home and saw Jesus his first time, uh, he was there for 15 minutes in the middle of a church service. Actually, it was a prayer meeting we had. And he slumped over, so to speak, and fell asleep. And I thought, great, thanks for falling asleep in my service. Well, he didn't fall asleep. He challenged God. He said with that genius mind of him, of his, he was a genius. He said, uh, either you ought to be here with me or I ought to be there with you. Now, we know God will never leave us nor forsake us. And we know that he raised us up to sit together in heavenly places. So, so technically, we are there and he is here. But his mind said there's more tangibility than just knowing it's a truth. I ought to be experiencing that truth. And he went on to say, I can't make you come here, but you can't stop me from going there. And he slumped over and fell asleep, which he didn't fall asleep. He just left his body and spiritually was standing before God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And they said to him, welcome home. The second thing they said is, all my children are supposed to know me like this. The third thing they said is, there's nothing special about you. The fourth thing, you're just one grain of sand on a very large beach. And I like what was said because then, you know, the religious people who haven't had that experience would get mad and not want you to think that they're less than a cowboy. So they would say, well, that's, he must have a prophetic call on his life to explain away why he could have an experience with God. But God said, there's nothing special about you. You're just one grain of sand. In other words, anybody can become very spiritually acclimated and have more experiences than the normal person. It's about how you apply yourself. And I'm getting to something. When he came back, of course, I slapped him, you know, because he was, he was the only one left in the church building. And I went over there and slapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, wake up. And he wasn't asleep, but he came back. And when he came back, his eyes were just all bugged out. He said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then right away I said, you were, you were with the Lord. He said, and then his, his comment was, yes, but it's not good. Well, I have to correct him because James 1.17 says, Every good and every perfect thing cometh from above, from the Father of lights, of lights, in whom there's no variableness, either shadow of turning. Which is the irony that the preacher had, them, had the, 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 the scripture with the reference while the cowboy actually saw God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to enjoy that and laugh about that because again that is the ridiculousness of religion religion always removes God from the equation and leaves you with information about him. I want you to think about this. What part of a relationship with God shouldn't be real enough to at least hear his voice and recognize his presence on a daily basis? Especially when Cain, a complete sinner, getting ready to commit murder of his brother Abel, could hear the Lord in complete sentences and recognize his presence. And he's a sinner. Wouldn't that surely seem to indicate that a better covenant with a better promise, with the blood of Jesus, raising us up to sit in heavenly places, thoroughly cleansing us and making us like himself so that his voice to us is our mother tongue. 
wouldn't that seem to indicate we should have as much as Cain, at least, and then more? And that's before we get to heaven. In my Baptist church, we made, we made our miserable life feel better by singing about what it's going to be like when we get there. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Seeming to indicate it's not fun right now, but it will be if you'll just hang on. Is everybody doing okay with this? Because if you don't like it, we'll stay here all night. Now I'm kind of messing with you, but I, I want you to get this. This, again, if you struggle with any of this, that's religion. And I'm going to show you that in just a couple of minutes. But when I finally did get him to tell me about 10 days later what wasn't good, this is what he said. When you see things from God's perspective, they're different from how we see things. He said, from his perspective, there's a lot of people that think they're going home to heaven that have never been connected to Jesus. And I said, do you mean the scripture where Jesus said, wide is the gate to destruction and many there shall be that find it, but narrow is the way to eternal life and only a few? He goes, well, there's your scripture for it. See, there's so much more for us. We settle for so little. And God's just looking for those that would approach their relationship with him like a friendship. And use your faith to believe he's the greatest friend in the whole entire world. Because I don't see anything in Jesus' life and ministry that in 33 years Jesus said, you know, I'm following as close as any man has ever followed God. But I will tell you, at times it's a drag. He just doesn't really have much going for him. And things are kind of really repetitive. And I get bored every once in a while and just want to kind of, you know, kind of cop out. Jesus never seemed to indicate that it was boring. And when those disciples were walking back with Jesus to Jerusalem on the Emmaus Road and Jesus began to share some things and then they realized it was the Lord. They said among themselves, did our hearts not burn within us? You see, the part of us that actually can become addicted was actually created within you for the Lord that you would have a little of him and want more of him. You would have more of him and want only him. And you couldn't get enough. And for all eternity, we'll have day after day after day for billions and billions and billions of years without end where we won't be able to get enough of the goodness of God and of his love and kindness, of his mercy toward us, and of his showing us what grace always was and is now and forevermore. So open up your hearts and your minds and broaden your stakes of your tent so that God can fill you with something that you've not yet experienced. Because he's just too big to come to church over and over and over again like Groundhog's Day where it never changes and you just get the same thing and you get that same little blessing and you go home thinking that was just so wonderful but nothing really significant changes. I want significant change. Not a little change. Significant change. And in order to have that Your mind has to contemplate a bigger God than you've experienced so far. Because the grace of God can only go so far 
as the ceiling of your imagination. And if you can't think it, you won't walk in it. If you can't think higher than where you're at, you'll never go there. If you have a partial healing, can you see a whole healing? Because if you can't and you're okay hurting with the degree that you hurt, but it doesn't incapacitate you so it's fine, then you'll always be right there. But you could have more. And no one can make you have more. 